Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, my name is Fernando. I'm one of the youth librarians for the Salinas Public Library. Uh, today, we're doing a live workshop on character design. Uh, we have two special guests. Uh, her name is, uh, when she goes by the name, Cheeb uh, from the Hunt R Us podcast. And also joining us, uh, Jax. Hello. All right, let's begin. Um, you guys you want to show us how to character design for those who are here? All right, so um, my name is Cheeb. I am the character designer, artist, and the host of Haunts R Us. Uh, it's a podcast that I started with a couple of my friends. I'll show you some of the artwork. Uh, let's start with like sharing our artwork first. So just give me a minute to figure out the technicals of Zoom. So this is some of the art that I do for my podcast. Uh, the gimmick that we have is that we talk about uh, haunted objects, haunted places. Uh, it's something that's, uh, I grew up Hispanic. So it's just something that's been part of my culture. I just grew up believing in like spirits and ghosts. Uh, we did a special where we redesigned the characters to have his traditional Hispanic clothing, as you can see here. Uh, I always, I also really like to draw skeletons. <laughs> I'm all about the Hispanic culture and I'm all about ghosts and having fun. And then let's see some of Jack's your artwork. Okay, show us. Okay, so I'm Jax. Um, I actually designed some of the mascots for the library, so such as these. So this is John Steinbark. I made him a dog because John Steinbark had a dog. So I kind of make that collide. This is Lucia Chavez. Um, she's a coyote. She's for Cesar Chavez. And we have Gabby Gavilan because Gavilan Library is a hawk. And uh, how do I- Can you expand the, the image, Jess? You gotta like click uh, on it. Ah. <laughs> is that like that? It. We're only seeing the, the icons. Oh, geez, hold on. Uh, hold on. Let me share my whole screen instead of just parts of it, which means, okay, how does that look now? Does this look better? Yeah. Good. Perfect. All right. Yeah. That was right. over again. All right. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay. Can you see it? Okay. Yeah, we can. Hey. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> oh, there it is. Go okay. through your art. Uh, let's see. Oh, what's this? Okay. Okay. So um, this was from a music video of the Starlight Brigade, and I wanted to make my own OC. Um, I got her. She's pretty cute. She has like little beetles, and she's kind of like an alien thing. And I love her. And then this was from my D&D group. I did like a little silly rough sketch of my crew. This is me, a thief. We have a golem guy, a barbarian, and a mystique. So that's just a sketch. And then this is another one from my D&D character. Um, he's like a artificer, like a push maker guy. And he makes like potions out of bombs and stuff. And I made like a little chibi version of him. It's really cute. And then I have a other OC. I don't have a name for her yet, but she is like a Grim Weeper kind of thing. So I have her in a pose and she's looking kind of like tough. And then here's my other sketches of some of her expressions. I'm just testing out the feel of the character. I don't know what expressions I really like for her. Like I like this one, but not sure about her like smiling here or being super angry. I'm just feeling it. I don't know yet. And then of course, and then I have like a cute little 
fox girl thing. I don't know. She was really cute. I really like her muzzle and her nose right here. So I kind of just like sketch and browse around. So that's some of my art. Yeah. And Jax, you mentioned that you have original art. Can you tell me what that means to have an OC? So an OC is an original character. So it's like if you love watching or playing like Cuphead and you want to make an OC character in that world, you can make like a cu Cuphead inspired character that should be in that world and that would be like your own character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how did you get started like doing OCs? Um, possibly in high school because I got really into like web comics mm -hmm. and I uh, follow lots of people that made like fan art out of it. And OCs kind of happen in the fan art as well. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got to know it. Yeah. Well, did you make OCs as well? I made a lot of OCs. <laughs> I it's it's cringe, but you know, and this is the new era of like being vulnerable. But I started making OCs around middle school, and mm. I was really into the vampire <laughs> community. So <laughs> that's I like would, when Twilight came yeah, out. Yeah, that was definitely during the Twilight era. I would like make my vampire characters. And I would like go online with my friends and we would like, and we would write stories to each other about our characters. See, for and me, it was Homestuck. It was all about- It was Homestuck. Home oh it was Homestuck. I made a lot of Homestuck, like troll sonas and stuff. Mm -hmm. That was, that was a big deal back then. It really was. Homestuck was everywhere. I don't know if some of your kids are recognized what Homestuck is. Let me share my screen. Let me show you the world of Homestuck. Hold on just a second. I'm pulling up Google. <laughs> the wonderful world of Homestuck. Ah, hold on. So yeah, this is Homestuck. I remember this Homestuck. being everywhere on like Tumblr when I would browse as a teenager. It's a good web comic. Again, it is a web comic. People make fan art, and then, and the thing about these characters is like, even though they're really simple, uh, sometimes having like a simple basic character is better because then like anyone can draw it, and they could create their own character, and they could like take the design and like really make it their own. Yeah, and because it's so simple, it's also recognizable. Like everybody knows who everybody is. Yeah, it's... in this web comment like I know exactly who everybody is and just these simple designs is mm -hmm. amazing. Hey, um I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I want to start drawing my own comics, my own characters, where should I begin? Or where do you begin? Um, I would start by talking about it. I mean some people say that you shouldn't talk about projects because then you won't do them. But I am a very collaborative person. Uh, the podcast I do with like four different people who are all in charge of like different aspects of it. And I really like to work that way because that means I'm not alone in how I do my art because uh, I could always have someone else and like they could help me out with my art. But how I always start is like I talk about the story that I want to tell and I start discussing things out loud because as you're discussing like the story and the art out loud, you'll start to really think about these things a little bit more and you'll be able to bounce your ideas off of someone who could, someone who like you trust and who is probably also an artist. I know I love talking to other artists. Uh, I always find excuses to hang out with other artists and talk to them and collaborate with them. So definitely like talk about it with someone that you know and like start sketching out ideas, just sketch out like the characters you want, sketch out like the sort of environments, uh, consume media that's similar to what you want. Uh, there's like this idea that everything has to be original, but that's completely false. Like uh, no one exists in a vacuum, like you're going to be influenced by the things that you love. And it's totally okay to take those things that you love and look them over and like start um, taking them apart, you know? See, for me, it was whenever I want to make a character, I look at images, I get inspired by like certain feels. So if I want a character that's like kind of spacey or like outer space and like cute, I look up different outfits you look up. I look up space pictures. I just look up 
anything like to inspire me to like try to envision something in my mind and then I pull it into like a little board so I could look at it and if I ever need to look inspired for that one character I look at those certain images to get that creative juices flowing mm -hmm. I'm a solo person <laughs> um I do have some of the can you look at the all right so let me show you what a mood board looks like Hold on, let me set that up on the computer. So I'll show you like a mood board that I did. So I can like. So this one? Yeah. So again, this is like a spacey one. I love the hair. I love the like clouds and like UFOs and stuff. And I put up some outfits. I use Pinterest because Pinterest is like an amazing search engine. You could also just use Google. And then I have another one. This is like probably like for a rogue D&D character with like potions. And this is what I use. I use like foresty capes and like mushrooms and just kind of earthy tones. So that's kind of what a mood board is or an inspiration. Mm -hmm. All right, so what makes a good uh, character in your guys' point of view? Ooh. That's a big question. Uh, I think what a lot of what a lot of folks think when they see characters is like oh it has to be like this completely like realistic complete like very detailed character and a lot of time it's the simplest characters are the best characters because they're the most recognizable and they're like the easiest for you to work with um also any characters that are just like distinct from one another one another hold on let me put up a couple of characters that I love and I'm going to try to break him down for you for a bit so I am going to do some technical stuff right now so give me some patience Okay, so let me share my screen with y'all. Okay, can you see the characters on the screen? Yes. Okay, so this is from what is it? Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, they really took the turtles, which are essentially the same guy, but different colors, which is also a valid way to create a character, honestly. Uh, even like marketing wise, like people will tell you to like, just make the same character, but different colors because it's easy, it's recognizable to see. It's it's what we saw with the Homestuck characters. Yeah, it it's is just, just same characters, it's just, just the different same colors. guy, but different colors. <laughs> or and, like different hair. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, what I really like about these characters is that they really try to differ differentiate uh, each of the characters. In particular, we could see that Ralph here has like a big size different and he's like a lot chunkier and more angular. He's massive. He, he is spikes. great, I love him. And hopefully, let me pick a color that's easy to see. To pick yellow. So we could see from here that. Okay, as you can see, let me pick a slightly. We see that they have like this big sort of bulky body right here. And this is sort of like something that all the other ones share that they have like a square body, but he's just on like a more massive level than the others. 
He's like twice the size of Donatella right I know. <laughs> <laughs> what I really like Poor about Mikey. this is that they tried to like incorporate like different species of turtles so that they wouldn't all be the same one. I particularly like the way that they angle the head up because I'm a really big fan of like having angles in my character designs. You can see it here, uh, Leo and what's the name of this guy Mikey Leo and Mikey are like pretty much the same guy but like the one th the two things that are distinct is that he gets to have like these cool tattoos and like these knee pads that like really differentiate him as a character and plus another thing I like is that Leo has like a pointy head for some reason um, and I love it I love his weird triangle <laughs> head. a little eyeball there yeah bro <laughs> <laughs> he's got the illuminati on his head <laughs> and donnie i just really like him he just has like a full sort of square head right here and like his goggles he is such a cool guy but i also like that you could actually see their personalities mm -hmm. now you could tell that uh mikey is like the more artistic one because he paints on his stuff Oh. You could tell that this is the tech nerd because he wears his technology on him, such so as like right here. He's got like his little beeper. <laughs> I'm gonna call it a beeper. I don't know what it's called. Hey. But yeah, having like these sort of characters that are like distinct from one another in like shape and size, like I think really makes a good character design because you could tell from a glance which character is supposed to be which, you know. Are you going to uh, show us a little sketch or draw something for us? Yeah. You want to start creating a character? Yeah, we could create a character right now, live. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> do you want to draw first? Okay. So how do you start off? Do you do shapes or you can use it straight to the... So first you have to start out with like a concept. Hold on. Let me get the red so we could talk about like what is the character for i'm sorry my handwriting is not great you don't need to write it oh, hold on. Oh, sorry about that so what is the character about like what is the setting that your character is going to be in like is it like a comedic thing is it like more action oriented like you really have to think about like the sort of media that you want to use your character for and then like after and then after you decide on these things you can make a mood board how about we make a oc from ninja turtles from Ninja Turtles, you want to make a Ninja Turtle OC? Yeah, let's just make a Ninja Turtle OC because they already know what Ninja Turtle is. So for me, I just do basic shapes. So I do like a head and I'll do like a body kind of thing. I don't know. We got shorter legs here. Okay. Um. Well, I work at the library, so I like to have my OC with like books. But they mm -hmm. should have like a power. So maybe what happens if they're like a spellcaster with the books? They could be a spellcaster. They get like they could carry their book around and like on their side. I've seen that a lot. Okay. Um. So will it be a female or a male? I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yes. When you first started, how how was your your first sketch? How would you start as a beginner? As a beginner, I remember I would try to imitate the art styles of like the cartoons that I really liked. And really the best way to do that is to start um, figuring out like what the basic shapes, because if we look at cartoons, a lot of them are like broken down in like basic shapes just to like make it just like make it easier because a lot of people are working on their this one piece of media. So the character designs have to be consistent. So a lot of them are like made of like very simple shapes that are built up upon. So I would look at cartoons that I liked and I would try to like imitate the style as best as possible. So like, let's say the Powerpuff Girls, they're just like a circle and a triangle, for example. They really are. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're extremely simple characters. So I remember I would draw the Powerpuff Girls a lot and I would try to try to like have my own spin on the Powerpuff Girls. Uh, for whatever reason, I would always like age them up because I was really into fashion dolls and brats. 
So I wanted them to have very elaborate outfits. <laughs> so I would practice like my idea of like, what was what would bubbles look like as a teenager and what kind of clothes would she wear? And so I would look up like the type of clothes that I thought like bubbles would wear as like a teenager. And I would like draw it like that. Like it really starts with like these simple ideas where it's just like, how can I take this thing that I know and like make it my own or add on to it? And like, there's nothing wrong with like being derivative because like nothing and nothing is original. Like we all like draw inspiration from other places. Yeah. Let's see, let's see. Okay, thank you. Okay, like just sketching out kind of, um, I study a lot about like anatomy, you mm -hmm. know, like drawing right now is kind of just like second nature because I drew so much as a repetitiveness. Um, it's really important about proportions, but for like, you don't really need to have proportions for your characters. You could draw them, it's a cartoon, especially you don't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be realistic. You could be totally like, just like so simple. And he could just have like a book here and like he's a little cutie yeah. <laughs> and he could have like a little hat too. And like to write off of, I'm um, sorry, go on. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to ask you, that was from Among Us. <laughs> Actually? <laughs> yeah, the Among I, I think, the Among I, I think are great characters. But to piggyback off of what she's saying, you yeah. know, uh, when you start drawing as a child, uh, you draw a lot of iconography. So what is iconography? Iconography is, you know, this is an eye. You got eyelash right there. Yes. And like, this is a nose. And then we have like this idea of like, this is what a dog looks like. And like a dog doesn't actually, you know, look like this. But it's the, but we've like established as the culture, like, yeah, that's what like a cartoon dog looks like. So as yeah. a child, you find yourself like mixing iconographies and like, it completely makes sense. You know, this is something that like Pablo Picasso played with when he would do his artworks is like, he would try to go back in a state like where he would draw as a child. So like, if I draw this circle, these two dots and this, this is a face, no matter how you see it. <laughs> like your brain is hardwired to find, to like find these connections and everything. But he's really it's cute. He's very <laughs> cute. Thank you. So give him a little bit of hair. Character done. <laughs> Character done. Like no nice. matter how you see it, like we will always see a face and like a circle, two dots and a line. Yeah, so it yeah. doesn't really need to be complicated mm -hmm. in any of your character designs. You do whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah. As long as you keep drawing, don't get discouraged. And it's up to you. Just draw whatever you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. For right now, you could draw whatever you're comfortable with. And especially if you're a young, young person, you'll have to learn to forgive yourself a lot because the muscles in your hands are still developing. Uh, this is a problem that I would have when I would talk to, when I would like teach the kids at the YMC how to draw is that they would get frustrated because their style was never consistent. And a lot of drawing is muscle memory. Like I'm pretty sure there's like some things that I could draw with like my eyes closed or I would get like certain aspects of it closed. So like, I'm gonna try to draw an eye with my eyes closed. Jax is here to make sure I do it. Okay. Her eyes are closed. Oh my She's gosh. <laughs> You're a little off. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're a little bit off, but like it's the muscle memory that's there. Like I know how to draw an eye. I know that you have to draw an almond, a shape and some eyelashes. Like this is muscle memory to me at this point. Mm -hmm. And like, you're fine that just as time goes on, there will be like certain strokes that are like more comfortable for you. So yeah. if we could like take a moment to talk about like lines and strokes. So lines, this is a line. A line makes up every piece of your drawing. Uh, I personally like to draw with a lot of curves, but I also like to add a lot of edges because I'm really edgy <laughs> and I like to draw goth. This is an edge word over here. Yeah, so. I, I don't know if you noticed when I was drawing the little Ninja Turtle, but I draw like very light and I kind of draw like, kind of like a pencil, so if I may. Like if I draw a circle, I don't really draw a circle. I kind of just like 
kind of etch my way to like a good circle Mm -hmm. (laughs) and that's just how I draw with everything and then later on I'll just clean it up Mm -hmm. so I'm not very clean (laughs) it's okay uh I took like an art class where we were forced to like the teacher put a lot of emphasis in like your stroke work which is like your lines so I just like forced myself to like draw in single in single strokes which I think has been like a bit of a detriment to me because I'm just like I need to I need to get this one line perfect or else I will die no no you (laughs) just let that creativity flow and you just draw whatever you want (laughs) Mm. So you did lots of little sketches right there. So like, this is a face. Like I like to add like these sort of edges right here to indicate the cheekbone and like give a little anime eyes for right now. And he oh, wears like a cool cute. hat. Yeah. And I think, I think uh, people we draw for like two different reasons. We like to draw to like show off to people. <laughs> But I think like the most important like form of drawing is like when you're drawing from your for yourself because you're just experimenting, especially doodling is just so important because one, you're exercising your hands, your hands are developing. Hold on. And like it really gives you like a feel for like the type of strokes and movements that your hands like to do. So that'll kind of like develop, that'll like kind of determine, determine what your style is like. Like if you like to draw a lot of edges or if you like to draw a lot of soft sort of stuff, you know? Let's just delete that. Um, so like, how would you design your own original character? So how would I design my own original character? So if we talk about how I designed the Haunts R Us characters, it did come like with an idea. So um, I collect dolls. Uh, I don't have I don't have any haunted dolls. I mostly collect fashion dolls, but I'm fascinated by the idea that like a doll can be haunted. So that was something that I really wanted to explore, really wanted to get into. Uh, So at the time, the Annabelle movies were really popular. Oh yeah, Annabelle. And I just did a little bit of research on Annabelle. The animal that you see on screen on the movies looks nothing like the actual Annabelle because the actual Annabelle is just a raggedy Ann doll. Yeah, she's cute. She's super adorable. She's, she's just pretty like, simple. She's pretty simple. And like, I saw that and I had like my aha moment where I was just like, I'm going to design these characters that are haunted dolls that are rag dolls. And so... When I started designing my character, so I'll design, I'll like have like a small sketch of like the character that I play. Notice how she's doing a basic sketch of like the body proportion. Yeah, so for she, scale, uh, sh- like the majority of her of her character design is like this bell skirt. And like when we look at Raggedy Ann dolls, they're all wearing like little little dresses and stuff. Yeah, like so a little we have, dress apron thing. Yeah, they have the dress apron. So I made sure to like incorporate that into my design. And you know, they all have the triangle nose. From Animal Crossing. From, yeah, the <laughs> Animal Crossing triangle nose. And I know they have like cute round blushies. Yeah, and like the blushes are like definitely a big part of the design. So I knew I had to have these elements. And so I played around with it. I sketched like, I don't have any of the sketches right now, but like I sketched and sketched and sketched until I saw like a character that I liked. So, uh, and like I took the designs that I liked and like I kept them in. I knew that I wanted her to have like a big bell skirt. I knew that I wanted her to have an apron. And I knew that I wanted her to have black hair because I didn't want to go with like the red hair. It just Mm. didn't fit like the character that I wanted to have. But like, how do you know what kind of hair to add to this character? Like, is it going to be fluffy or is it going to be like rope? Because like the Raggedy Ann doll is like with rope hair, right? mm -hmm. When I initially started designing, if you look into my Instagram, like the original designs do have the ropey hair and then we kind of do away with them and like make them solid and that's like completely valid because like as you design characters you know they 
there's a saying that says that like artists are never done drawing like their art is just taken away from them and they have to like live with it oh I like that yeah yeah <laughs> so like when, when eventually we were just like we have a deadline I want to start the art for this podcast now I want to start it and like these are the designs that we have let's publish it like this and then let's see and then let's see how it goes yeah and artists are allowed to like totally just change their style if mm-hmm. they're really tired of drawing one certain way it's totally valid to just explore. Yeah, and plus, like, you'll find as you draw these characters over and over again that you're going to streamline them. You're going to, like, simplify them as it goes on because, well, you don't you don't want to torture yourself <laughs> with drawing <laughs> something that you don't like. Uh, for me, I used to try to draw as realistically as possible, and then I found that I don't even like drawing like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even like drawing things that are realistic I just like drawing cartoons and so like that's what I enjoy drawing and that's what I draw a lot of (laughs) I like the little and you know if you want to draw realistically that's completely fine Uh, you'll find that there's certain things that like feel good to draw and certain things that don't feel as good to draw and like I really uh I really want to drive home the fact that like it's you who's like making these character designs so you're the one that's going to make the calls of like how these characters are drawn like if you're someone that likes to add a lot of little details that's great but especially if you put it in the context of like drawing a graphic novel you're gonna have to draw those details over and over and over again can you imagine how (laughs) tiring and annoying it will be to draw every little detail so I think simplifying your characters is really something that's golden like that's that's going to be something that's going to follow you it's like you're going to want to simplify these characters so that way you could draw them over and over again until as quickly as possible as well you know art no matter how good you get at it takes a lot of time and if you're gonna draw a graphic novel it's an incredibly time consuming thing to do and imagine drawing all those extra things that you add to your character in that little time frame yeah yeah. and especially if you're looking at a lot a lot of professional art let's say if we talk about uh jojo's bizarre adventure i love jojo so jojo's bizarre adventure is like a manga that's been going since like the 80s it's so it's very anime. old and it <laughs> has an anime it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh the mangaka is Araki and he is like really inspired by high fashion and like yeah. poses so like his characters are like very stylized they always have like these amazing outfits with all of these little details it's like a runway yeah on, he like, does paper. like a lot of runway type fashions and then he poses these characters in like cool and ridiculous ways but you also have to consider that Araki is a professional and he has up to like five assistants working with him yeah so all the people that are drawing the outfits drawing all of the details like he's not doing that himself he's just making the roughs and he's passing it passing it along like it's a uh what's the word I'm looking for like, like a com- yeah it's like an assembly line so it's those, like his sketches are possibly just like um stick figures maybe and yeah, then they're like just later like, on you just fine-tune it yeah so his mm-hmm. assistants are like trained to recognize the style and to draw the way he wants them to so like when you look at commercial art you really have to like think about that because if it's just yourself you're the one that has to do all the work you know and like you don't want to make yourself miserable by giving yourself like a ton of work because you thought this would be like I don't know it's like artists have this thing where like we have to like suffer for our art for like no good reason kind of like <laughs> kind of like forcing us draw backgrounds when we uh-huh. hate drawing backgrounds just just like I, copy on the background that you see out in the wild you I have, have a question, question. comment yeah. um we we're about to finish in about 15 20 minutes oh no (laughs) is it possible to create a character based on what the people who attended the workshop um tell you yeah of course yeah give us jump out some concepts and then we're gonna take away our screen and we're gonna try to design a character based on like the things that you've told us
Any takers? Something. Oh, an action figure? An action figure? Okay. Let's do action I mean, figure. Something action? No. Kind of, so when you say action figure, you're like a superhero? A superhero or someone that is, I guess, a soldier or something like that, similar? I don't okay, know. Okay, so we want something that's action figure and we want something that's kind of macho. A soldier. Oh, okay. A very yeah, well, macho action figure. Okay. <laughs> macho or soldier. Okay. Give us, throw something else at us. Alfredo. Uh, no. No, that's it. You guys just want a macho action figure as a soldier? Can he have a weapon? Can he have what kind of weapon? He's gonna have a, a hammer. A hammer? A hammer. Okay, so <laughs> he's, he's a, hammer. a soldier that walks around <laughs> with a hammer. He okay. fixes things. Yeah. Okay, so now this is the part where like you start brainstorming in your head. It's like, well, like a hammer, that's like a construction thing. So well, he's like a soldier, so he's gonna fight with a hammer. So he has an action figure. So, I, so he has to I'm, have a hard hat. For I'm, safety. <laughs> I'm picturing like a cute safety little, first. <laughs> yeah, I'm picturing like a cute little rubber mallet. Oh, like like Harley Quinn that kind works of, too. Yes, like Harley Quinn. And then of course he's gonna have like a hard hat, right? So like is it gonna be like round? Yeah, hard hats are round. Would he and... be like under camo? <gasps> yeah. And then he'll have like leaves on him. You know. I suppose soldiers already wear hard hats, don't And then they, they wear, like, a uniform as mm -hmm. is. So let's just get rid of Okay, so we kind of got his weapon down. Do you want to draw him, or do you want me to draw him? Okay. Do you want to draw? I don't mind. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, or we could do, like, both. So let's... We can make it a collaborative piece. Do you I'm want not... me to draw the clothes? Sure. I like drawing the clothes. Okay. Cool I have a question. Oh, yeah. what? When you guys mean macho, do you mean like muscly or like with muscles or? Yeah, what like muscly. That is true. Oh. There's two different kinds of macho. There is two kinds yeah. of different macho. Or two different kinds of macho. <laughs> do you guys <laughs> want him to be muscly? I've never really. I can draw muscle. I've. In high school, I drew a lot of men. Because <laughs> right. I was going for through... reasons. Because <laughs> I was a teenager and I was going through puberty. So let's <laughs> go ahead. Head is always a circle. And I want to really exaggerate this character. So I know that a chest is essentially like kind of this big triangle. Like so the Ninja like Turtle these... guy, how yeah, macho he so was. Let's give him like these big old arms. Day, but he needs to hold a hammer. Remember. Okay, he needs to hold this. Oh, what is if it's a little hammer? He just has a little teeny tiny. <laughs> you're changing. You're giving me too many ideas. I'm sorry. Let's keep them simple for now. See, this is the deal. So this is why we talk about it. Give him these meaty thighs. <laughs> why do you have to accentuate the thighs? <laughs> Look, he's running a lot. He gets to have big old meaty thighs. I would think he has bigger arms because he has a hammer. Wait, so I'm still drawing the arms, baby. <laughs> I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm, getting... I'm just saying. I'm know. just... So let's, let's give him... And since he's an... Since he's a... Since he's a an uh, action figure we could really accentuate the segmentation of his limbs and stuff oh you could so give him all the edges you want i know like toy. all the edges because he's a toy so i'm gonna draw like the joint here and then i'm gonna simplify his hands because i do not like to draw hands nobody so, likes to draw hands so sometimes i just draw characters with mittens you're allowed to cheat <laughs> because you're the you're the artist it's your <laughs> work you can do whatever you want and plus when, no look at, plus when we look at action figures like their hands are usually melded together anyways, yeah it know? is just like mittens yeah they are kind of just like mittens there's purpose here <laughs> So, what if we give him make him a dog? <laughs> <laughs> I think they asked for a man. <laughs> Dogs are 
better. <laughs> okay, so drawing faces is, uh, it can be pretty complicated. I love drawing faces. I think that's just something that you like you'll you'll get with time you really like for me I like to study people like just out and about or I just look up expressions or poses and I just practice and eventually it'll just kind of be like second nature so one of the things about action figures is that they usually can't have too many details so that's going to save us some time I'm going to give him his eyebrows one thing that's important is that the eyebrow and the eye are usually around the same size. That's something I remember struggling with as a kid. So let's give him like these nice round romantic eyes. See? Wow, why is he romantic? Romantic in <laughs> those I'm, I'm drawing him and I'm going to draw a hottie, okay? <laughs> a hottie with a body. <laughs> Look, you're asking for a female's perspective of a soldier that wields a hammer. So I'm this sorry. is the type of content. A tiny, <laughs> a tiny hammer. Hold on, you're making my hand all sorry. <laughs> you're making me nervous. You do you. I'm gonna give him these beautiful sculpted brows. Wow. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna make this it's almost like a uni brow. <laughs> Just I know. It's fine. Is the manufacturer kind of messed up there? <laughs> it's fine. He's he's making an aggressive face, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, give him like these. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And hold on. I'm gonna try to do it without erasing anything. Just like whatever I make goes. <laughs> it's solid. Again, I'm gonna give him like this. This is. <laughs> Dang, he, he's beautiful. He's buff. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to give him like very strong, very angular chin. Like really bring it home that he's a big old macho man. I'm trying not to spend too much time on the face because that's like my favorite thing is drawing men's faces. I think it's everybody's favorite <laughs> <Yeah>. place. <laughs> everybody's favorite place is the face because that's where all the expression, that's where kind of everything comes to life. But it's also about the pose too. And he wears his, I'm trying yeah. to draw a hard hat from memory. So he kind of looks like, he has a police <laughs> element on. This is why you use reference kids. Like, yeah. Since we're running out of time, we're going to do the best we can with what we have. <laughs> oh, I see it now. Yeah. So this is his hard oh, hat. And he could have netting and like foliage, foliage on it. And I'm going to, he's going to have like a logo right here that's a hammer. Because he's hammer man. Because he's hammer man. So he gets to I have a logo him. there. That's that I, and then we're gonna draw his ears. And I know the ears this should be like at the bottom of the nose up to the eyes. Yeah, so to the nose and to the nose. This is stuff that I just kind of do instinctually, just from like studying anatomy books. Yeah. And I'm gonna just give him a nice tank top. Oh my <laughs> gosh, what a babe. <laughs> nice to me it's the simplest piece of clothing i can think of at the moment we're, we're drawing you guys a total babe magnet yeah here. i'm gonna we're gonna really see his pecs <laughs> right here nice <laughs> is he gonna have like booty shorts no <laughs> you can't say that can i not say that <laughs> Is she allowed to say that? <laughs> Moderators? <laughs> I got the okay. <laughs> okay. And then I so he's gonna he's, it's gonna say hammer man. Oh. <laughs> and then the spell hammer. <laughs> he's not very smart, guys. He uses a hammer and battle. <laughs> 
dodge a little hammer in his little fist. It should be this one. Oh, okay. And then let me accentuate the oh, there's muscles. no time. Oh, there is no time. You're right. <laughs> and you said you wanted to have shorts. All right. My boy here gets a pair of shorts. Nice. Beautiful. I'm going to make him black just so that way they stand out and from like the white shirt. Oh, I love him. I hope you guys love him. Someone here likes him. I do. It's me. It's, I'm right yeah, here. I'm right here. He <laughs> looks nice. He looks nice. Yeah, see, people mm -hmm. say he looks nice. I mean, let me um, a little bit of references. Time. Yeah, if we were able to use references, we would be golden. Yeah, again, drawing takes a long time. Yeah. <laughs> this is just right off the back. Hold on. I'm going to do some. She's doing something crazy here. She's doing some crazy stuff. Where is where is my transform? There we go. She's cheating. I am cheating. I was about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Hold on. I'm I'm still getting used to this technology. It's fine. I was wondering if I could do that on paper and pencil. <laughs> oh, you, you have you your cut eraser. up the paper. <laughs> <laughs> I see something that I see a, a lot of animators do when they work on paper <laughs> is if they feel like they've made a mistake, instead of like erasing them, they'll just put like a sticky note and like redraw mm, it. Yeah. And then oh, like if God. you scan it, sometimes it doesn't show through, but like you could also like color correct it. Uh, you don't yeah. need to have complicated technology to draw. All you need is like a pencil and a paper. Uh, I happen to have some fancy drawing things because I'm an adult and I could <laughs> and I could do that. I just use enjoy. an iPad here, guys. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. Mm -hmm. What is the name of the program that you're using right now to draw? So this is a free program called Fire Alpaca. So I'll show you what the what it looks like. This is the logo for it right now. I don't know. Oh. Uh... Thank you. And I use Procreate on the tablet. So this is, I use Fire Alpaca. It has a logo of like a little alpaca on fire. It's, <laughs> uh, it's a completely free drawing program. You could download it on like your computer. Uh, this is for your computer though. So if you have a computer, you could download that. Yeah, and fortunately, Fire Alpaca is not on the tablet. Yeah, and it's not on the tablet. Procreate is $10, but it's like a one-time purchase. So to me, it's pretty great. Oh, okay, which one? Procreate? Yes. Procreate is the one that you could get on your iOS devices. Okay. <clears throat> now let's give him a really exaggerated hammer. Because, you know, <clears throat> he has to be at least somewhat prepared. I want to give it these nice bat wing. Yes. Beautiful. And some nails on the other hand, right? What was that? Nails. Some nails. Oh, some nails. <laughs> oh, what was if he just oh, he hits just people kidding. with a hammer? <laughs> what no, what if he has like, you know how soldiers have like the sash of, they have the sash of uh, bullets. He could have a sash of oh nails. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> this is all part of the character creating process. It's like, you'll find like funny things like that and you'll add it on. Yeah. It's mostly just like, what ifs? And you just do it you just kind of work with it like as you're going with the flow you'll have like ideas like but what if he carried little nails <laughs> that's a brilliant idea I that's amazing it. so he just like attacks <laughs> do, you think he do you think he throws the nail it's like oh a my baseball gosh, thing yes, that's amazing <laughs> it's like a hawkeye over here look okay so he might be a little bit smarter than we're giving him credit for <laughs> And you, you can see just by the action of doing, we are creating this character. We're giving this character life by the action of like drawing and like, I don't want to get too spiritual, but like the ability of like giving him energy. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel that when you draw innately, like you're giving these drawings energy, you're like, you have intent in your mind about what you want the character to be like. And for right now, we're doing something like really goofy. But and, I love him. I, and, I like him a lot. And, 
and we're and like he's kind of coming out a little bit goofy but that's great because like that's sort of like the vibe we're going for you know how are we doing on time though guys all right eight minutes uh, before we uh, finish this session, uh, do you guys have any books that you recommend on art related? Ooh, so I have this book here. It's called Super Manga um, Matrix. It kind of teaches you about like adding stuff to your tech characters and taking stuff, some stuff away. And it has lots of like references to it. And it's kind of just like my bread and butter. It's like my Bible. Mm -hmm. How about you, Chibi? For me, I I don't, I think the one that I've been like recommended over and over by other by other artists, and it's something that we have at the John Steinbeck Library is Moomins, uh, how to draw. Uh, Moomins, he was a, he was a, what do you call him? He was the person that would like draw advertisements for like old timey things. So when you think about like those 50s illustrated like advertisements that have like the women in the apron, like I don't know, serving Wonder Bread or I don't even know if that was in the 50s. <laughs> but just as an example, when you think about like 50s like advertisement, like he was the guy, he was one of like the big, uh, one of like the big <clears throat> illustrators that like worked with all of these advertising companies. And he draws, like, you're going to, you're going to learn from him and you're going to draw like a 50, you're going to draw a lot of 50s housewives because I guess that's just what he likes to draw. <laughs> but it's a good starting point. You get like a good idea with like how the face looks and like how to simplify the face, but make it look realistic. I think he's uh, really good about it. And just like, when I started out, I just started with like the how to draw anime. And what each and every one of those books does is it teaches you how to look at something and break it down to its simplest shapes. Would you say that's who you're inspired by? Who I'm inspired by? Who am I inspired by? I think one of my biggest inspirations is probably Jorge Gutierrez, who is the director of Book of Life. Mm. So I'm really inspired by by authors and people who incorporate a lot of their culture into their art because if um, you look at yeah sorry now that you're talking about the book of life um a while ago you show us a um a picture of the tapatio guy I oh yeah you, you mind sharing with us okay let me know if it's sharing the screen do you see my desktop yeah. okay we see it so uh, I also drew this. This is I drew this as a logo for fun. <laughs> Very inspired by Mexican pottery and Squidward, my two favorite things. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. But uh, this is a character that I originally designed for 3D modeling. What he is, he's a greaser skeleton. Uh, the reason I chose a greaser is because greaser, the term greaser was originally a slur that people would use uh, to talk about Mexicans who worked on cars. Because in like the 50s and 60s, like Chicano uh, people were really into their cars and we still are to this day. And they're originally the ones that coined the style of greasers because they would go, they would like work on their cars and they'd be covered in grease. And then like they, cre they created this entire fashion for it, you know? And this is the Tapatio guy. And this is the Tapatio guy. So for the podcast, we had a couple of episodes about Mexican urban legends, such as La Llorona. So we decided to redesign the character so that way they're wearing like traditional Hispanic garb. Uh, this character here is, a, she is a rag doll. They're all rag dolls. And I thought it would be fun to dress them up as the Tapatio guy because one of her uh, main colors was yellow. So let's see if I could find, that's this character. So <laughs> the idea for this character was that she was a skater girl. And so one time I was at Zoomies and I saw a yellow overall that looked just like this. And I was just like, that's like peak skater fashion, <laughs> of course. And then when we look at uh, Raggedy Andy, wears like his little overalls. So I thought it would be cute to have her like have the yellow overalls and like kind of look like Raggedy Andy, but as a <laughs> skater girl. 
I and so love when it, it came, right here. Yeah. <laughs> this is totally rad. <laughs> yeah. This is totally rad gal. And so when it came to designing uh, their Hispanic outfit, I decided to go with the Tapatio man because he wears a yellow uh, mariachi outfit. <laughs> And right here, you can see that I broke it down to like its simplest shape. So right here, the jacket is just a trapezoid with rectangles. And she has like a very boxy design. You know, I noticed that her belt is like those skeeter belts. Yeah, it is. Belt. It is. I wanted to go belt. with uh, <laughs> I love it. the checkered skater thing is like one of her motifs. A motif is like a theme that a character has like something that's repeated throughout their design you would call that a motif and her motif is that she's a skater girl so she so wears like added a lot the of skater stuff to the top of deal yeah so I added the skater stuff to like really <clears throat> make it look like her and then I also have these characters so my other co-host is from Guatemala so we looked up what like traditional Guatemala like outfits look like and so their outfits are like really cute. They have a lot of patterns and stuff. But the thing is, since we don't want to like waste, like spend a lot of time drawing details, we have to like really simplify it. <laughs> so she's wearing this black dress with like a sash. And then my character here is like wearing, this is like the first draft of this outfit. I didn't keep this outfit, but I'm going for like a regular like cotton Mexican dress with like the embroidery. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. So let's They're see. They're like white and it has like colorful flowers <clears throat> on them. Yeah, so right here I have exactly. the finalized design that I went for because in Mexican art, you see like a lot of sunflowers. So I wanted to like go with that because I remember because she's wearing like her little cotton dress and like an apron. And like in Mexican aprons, they're just full of like this beautiful embroidery. So I really wanted to incorporate that because that's something that I've seen in my culture a lot. Right here, you can see like a close up of the design. Uh, the reason that I do this is because for Haunts R Us, I work with three artists. So I need, I need the designs to be concise and I need to be able to like show them like, this is how this is drawn. This is the shapes it's made of. So I need the characters to be easily translatable to my two other artists mm. who helped me with the thumbnail art. So it's like a reference sheet. So this is like a reference sheet that I've made for the characters. I also have this one. So this is the shapes that the characters are made out of. Uh, with this one, you see in the red that that's the dress and like she's bean shaped. Whereas my other co-host, she's more of like eggplant shaped. <laughs> so like, uh, at, at the beginning, they were all the same shape. But as we developed the characters further, we wanted to reflect our host more. So we made them like curvier, we made them loonier, we made them like what the what our um, what we felt like our hosts were like. Hmm. And over here we have Gato, who's our skater girl, and she's like very boxy because she wears her her overall so that so she's like made up of squares I love that. and so that's a really interesting thing to play with when you make character designs it's like what if I make a character that is mostly composed of like squares yeah and that's something that I play around with a lot because it also helps them it also helps differentiate from like the other characters as we see here this is like one of like the first illustrations we made with like all three characters and then with the traditional garb, this is one of the illustrations that we did when we talked about the quitapenas of Guatemala, which are like little dolls that you just tell your problems to. And yeah, nice. those are sort of the things nice. that inspire me. Well, thank you guys. Yeah. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Um, I wanna thank everyone that participated in the, the live. And thank you girls for showing us your tips and tricks on how to, you know, design your, your, your characters. Uh, anybody has a question before we close down the, the live? No, thank you very much. All right. Yeah. Well, do you again. guys have your, do you guys have an Instagram? Sorry. Um, yeah, my Instagram and I think Chips is um, online is posted. Mine's the Witchiest Mushroom. 
Uh, oh, okay. what's yours? And I'm haunts underscore r underscore us. Uh, a lot of people follow us just for our art. We are a podcast. I will say that viewer discretion is advised because it's three adult yeah. women and three adult women will talk about three adult women things. So as what women do. As <laughs> as what women do. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. So if you want to follow us on our socials, they should be posted on the website and on the inst- on the library Instagram. Yeah. Oh, okay, perfect. Thank you okay. guys. Thank you Thank for you joining much. us. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you. I'll see you. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much.